And we're back, guys. We're taking a look at the reigning and defending champion here in New York City, Coco, and her path to defending her championship. That's right, guys. A lot of points she is defending here. An early exit in New York. Ooh, that could set her back in the rankings. I don't think she'll have a problem in terms of the race to the finals because she's done very well in terms of the slams and picking up points this year. So I think her spot in terms of Saudi Arabia should be should be a lot. But year over year, she has a lot of points to defend and an early exit could send her tumbling in the rankings. But let's take a look at her path to victory, guys. Her first round matchup is against Vivara. Now, she owns a head-to-head -head against Vivara, and this is a matchup here where I don't think she'll have a problem with Vivara. Now, Vivara, overall, she's, a, she's more of a defensive player. She doesn't really have the power that I think that could disrupt Coco. Uh, she faults a lot. She double faults a lot. And her serve, she doesn't have that strength that's really going to pressure Coco and back up Coco behind the baseline to where she can make mistakes. Vivara overall, in terms of New York, she's never made it past around a 32. And uh, she hasn't done anything really since 2001 when it comes to New York City. Um, I do think she's playing okay. Her form is okay. But again, uh, she doesn't have the athletic ability. She doesn't have the power. I don't think her forehand is really a weapon. That's going to frustrate Coco. I think relatively Coco should win this match in straight sets. As long as she's in form and in shape. Um, I'm pretty sure she's been practicing very, very hard. But again, Coco owns the head-to-head. -head. This is a very comfortable matchup for Coco that she should win. This will propel her to the second round where I think she'll face Solana Sierra. Now, Solana has a matchup with Tatiana Maria. And she's playing well. She's come through qualifiers. Tatiana Maria... Is she's a defensive player again? Doesn't really have the power at her age, the athletic ability. Uh, she's gonna go mid court with her defensive slices, her top spin. She's gonna try to keep her opponents stationary and disciplined. As long so that's gonna take away Solana's athletic ability. As long as she's disciplined and she hangs in there and waits for the right opportunity, she'll be able, she'll be able to hit winners against Maria. As long as she can do that, I think she gets past Maria and she'll face Coco. This is a matchup here where I think Coco's going to have too much weaponry. She's going to have too much defense, too much backhand. And if her serve is going, if her serve is hitting and firing on all cylinders, I think Coco probably hands out at least a double bagel with a matchup like this. But I do like Coco to get past Solana Sierra and make it into the third round where things get a little bit interesting. Now, a lot of people think that Svitolina will probably come through. And the head-to-head -head is 1-1. Uh, Svitolina beat Coco a few years ago at the Australian Open, I want to say. Um, and Coco is very young, uh, what, 17 years old. Svitolina, the furthest she's made it in New York's semifinal, where she played Serena Williams in 2019, and Serena destroyed her. That was very bad. She did not have the power then. Since getting with Gail, her power has improved a lot, which is why I always look at the players that are dating ATP players and see how their game improves. Her power, Svitolina's power, has improved. This could be a bit of a challenge for Coco, but... I think it's a test that Coco should pass. Uh, they played earlier this year in Auckland in, uh, en route to Coco's championship run. And Coco beats Fidelina. It went three sets. The first set went to a tiebreak. But the second and third set, Coco dominated pretty easily. I think Coco gets past Fidelina. It could go three. Remember last year, Coco started off a bit shaky against players like Laura Sigmund, Elisa Mertens. She struggled a little bit. But this is a matchup here. I do see Coco getting past Svitolina. I don't think Svitolina is in good form. Neither is Coco. But I do like the athletic ability and the power that Coco. This is the type of matchup that's tailor-made for Coco. Because you have someone that's just, just going to keep returning balls. Uh, just going to bring out the defense in Coco. And I think her athletic ability gets her the edge in a lot of these exchanges. What about Marta? A lot of people think that Marta could possibly come through over Svitolina. It's possible, but um, I don't think Marta's playing well. 
And even if Marta did come through, uh, we all know Coco owns a head-to-head there. They played at the Australian Open this year. Coco won that. They also rematched in Stuttgart where Coco was up a break in the third set and lost that. And a lot of people talk about Coco's losses on the season. A lot of her losses, she's been up in the third set, a break. And she just got too nonchalant, too lackadaisical. And that's another loss where Coco was up late in Stuttgart. And she ended up blowing the lead. She actually um, had a chance to serve it out, actually. So I don't think Marta will come through and face Coco. I think she will be bounced out prior. Emma Navarro in the fourth round. I do think we'll have a fourth round matchup with Emma Navarro. Now, Emma has never made it past the first round in New York City. New York has not been kind to her. But then again, she's only been on tour for less than two years, right? I followed her, covered a lot of her matches on the ITF level. And she's solid. She's very technical. And this is a matchup here where, again, I think Coco, if she plays her game, she'll beat Emma Navarro. Now, again, in route to her first championship of the year in Auckland, she beat Emma Navarro pretty easily in straight sets. And Emma Navarro said she wasn't ready for Coco. Those were her exact words. And the reality here is she wasn't ready for Coco. I felt the loss at Wimbledon, SW19, where Coco lost Emma Navarro, I felt her coaches... I just felt they set her up for failure. Coco was looking over for answers. And when you see a player looking to their camp for answers, that means the game plan is not working. And Coco's the type of player where she's she was known at an early age as like a genius, the whiz kid, right, where she problem solves and she figured things out. I think a lot of times, especially when you're playing someone that you know you can beat, someone that you dominated pretty easily. And Emma said, look, I wasn't ready for Coco the first time they played. I don't think you need to change too much. And I just felt that they tried to set up this game plan where Emma was just playing tennis. She wasn't doing anything fancy. Let Coco play and use her defense to return those balls and find her openings to, to set up winners. I just felt, and I feel this is happening a lot with Coco. They're giving her these game plans to where when, you know, take a look at someone like Michael Jordan. Phil Jackson was not calling all these plays for Jordan. He really wasn't. When you have great players, a lot of times you have to let them do what they do, right? If there's a situation where, you know, you feel you can get a point or you can take advantage of a weakness a player has, by all means, go ahead and do that. But to give these intense game plans that I feel are unnecessary, you're going to have your player overthinking and taking away, especially someone like Coco, her natural instinct that's what gives her the edge over other players her athletic ability that split second where she's going to go get that ball and make a play that you can't draw up you can't coach that's her instinct and when she's thinking too much you're taking away her strengths and I feel a rematch with Emma Navarro she's going to play her game and Emma's just not going to be able to handle look Coco's been on tour playing a lot tougher competition a lot longer than Emma Navarro even though she's younger, Coco's a lot more experienced. I do not want to see my player out there overthinking against a player she should be. I like Coco to get past him. Navarro in the fourth round. That's going to set up a fifth round showdown. What about Zachary? How do you think she's going to do it? In case you're not familiar, she recently parted ways with David Witt. And I bring that up. Venus Williams, former coach. I think David could help Coco's game a lot. He's a very technical coach. And I just feel... More than Brad Gilbert, Brad's a power style type of coach, fast serve, a lot of aggression. Coco already does that on defense. If to have her playing full speed offense and defense, that's a little tough. I think it's draining and it's making her overthink. I would love to see David Witt join forces with Coco. I think that would be a great partnership. Look how technical Pagula's gotten with David Witt. He literally made Pagula a walking quarterfinal in these big events. And the reality here is I think he would do Coco's game a lot of justice. But how far will Sacri go? I don't think she'll reach the quarterfinal. I think she'll be eliminated prior, even though she's got a very favorable draw. She just hasn't looked good. Would it be Vika or Bedosa? Now, we know Vika is she's a, she's a champion here, right? She's won New York. And we all know she's big time. 
she played very well, and she's been a runner-up here as well. We saw her uh, most recently, uh, what, 2022 or 2000, 2020 against Osaka, right? Uh, runner-up where a lot of a lot of players just didn't play due to COVID. But Vika or Bedosa in the quarterfinal, I would probably have to go. Now, the head-to-head -head with Vika is... Um, it's, I want to say it's 1-1, one, one, right? No, it might be one love. So they played once in Mexico a few, a couple of years ago. And that was the match I covered where Vika, she just went nutty against the ref, right? I mean, the chair umpire. And she literally said to the chair umpire, if you can't see what you're doing, you should not be up there. Okay. You should not be doing that job. If you're not paying attention, she literally destroyed the chair umpire. So when you see Coco standing up for herself over these bad calls, like four to five bad calls in a row, show her some respect. Because if you literally watch tennis and you saw a bad Vika disrespected this chair umpire over something that was like minute, I don't know. Coco's got to stand up for herself, and I applaud her father for giving her the courage to, to and, and, and the praise to say, look, Coco, you did a good job standing up for yourself. And that's where I do like Brad Gilbert. He does defend Coco a lot. But I'm going to have to go with Paula Badosa. Paula Badosa for a quarterfinal matchup with Coco. It's going to be good. It's going to be juicy. It's going to be big. Now, Paula Badosa is one of the few players that actually own the head-to-head -head against Coco. Inside. I mean, she's not in the top 10 anymore, but former top 10 player. And Bedosa's playing well. She has her confidence. She has her form. And I'm, I'm really excited for her. But this is a matchup here where I would have to go with Coco. Why? I just think Coco's variety would be a little too much. If she can push that grueling pace. And look, we all know Bedosa gets tired. She has asthma. But she's an amazing competitor, guys. She's left-handed and she plays with her right hand. Not many players on tour can say they do that. Now, she's ranked 29th after that amazing DC Open Championship. And if you don't think Coco, by um, playing in the Olympics, not being able to defend DC, if you don't think this is a match you would get up for, she would. Now, Paula Bedosa has never been past a round of 64 in New York. She did it in 21 and 22. And she has not done anything since 2022 here in New York. This is a matchup where the crowd would pick up Coco. I feel Coco's backhand versus Bedosa's backhand, I would give the edge to Coco. And I would have Coco defeating Paula Bedosa, even if Vika comes through. But I think Bedosa would come through and head it towards a clash, a semifinal clash with Madison Keys, possibly. I don't know, guys. I don't think Madison has her form. I'm going to say Arena Sabalenka, the showdown again. Now, yes, Coco owns the head-to-head -head against Sabalenka 4-3. She still owns the head-to-head. -head. And that just shows you how consistent Coco's been for her short career. Someone as dominant like Sabalenka, who's been on tour a lot longer than Coco. She's been in some very big matches. She's made the U.S. Open uh, Championship match last year. She was up a set. She literally had the championship in her hand, and Coco stepped up big time. I'd like Coco on hard to beat Sabalenka. Yes, we can go back to the Australian Open. That was hard, but Coco was up. She had a chance to serve that first set out. She was up on serve. Love 34-3. Had a chance to possibly break Sabalenka. Coco wins the first set. She wins her second Grand Slam in Australia. That's a fact. And here, in a big moment like this, where I've said, I don't think Sabalink is in her best form, despite winning another Master Championship, right? Congratulations for winning Cincinnati. She's not in her best form. And I think Coco, in a semifinal matchup, I think she would go to that backhand she would bring Sabalenka forward. I covered the match in Australia, and I showed you guys clip by clip how awkward Sabalenka looks when she has to play the net, when she has to come forward. She made a ton of mistakes. And I feel Coco, if they're going to game plan her coaching staff, a good game plan for Sabalenka, it has to include short balls. It has to include passing shots, right? It has to include 
deep balls from corner to corner down the tee. Get Sabalenka on the move where you can take away some of that power that she has. And Coco said it best. When I practice with Chris Eubanks, and, and he's my hitting partner, Sabalenka and Asabenko's shots, they don't actually seem that fast. I like Coco to get past Sabalenka as well. And that would set up a possible showdown with Iga Fiontech in the championship match. Negative. I think Iga is eliminated prior. We're back in a, in Coco. Finally, we get it again, ladies and gentlemen. We saw the matchup a couple years ago in California. Coco won that match. Elena Rabakina and Coco in the championship. Coco defending her title against Elena Rabakina. Who do you got, ladies and gentlemen? I want you to comment below. Who wins? That's right. Iga's eliminated. She's not in the championship match. I don't have her making the championship match here in New York. I would have Elena Rabakina coming through in the top portion of the draw. And Coco wins. That's right. Coco defeats Elena Rabakina. She defends her championship. How does she do it? Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, she does it because Elena Rabakina struggles against these short athletic players. She's very tall, in case you haven't noticed. Now, Elena Rabakina, she's going to put up 8 to 10 aces. That's her average. That's a given. That's a fact. But once Coco returns these balls, these rallies are going to be very long, very long. She's going to mix in short balls. She's going to hit passing shots. She's going to go to her backhand. Where Elena Rabakina strength is her forehand. On hard, I like the backhand over the forehand. That's right, guys. You have to hit running shots, returning that backhand with your forehand on hard. Rebecca's going to make a lot of mistakes, guys. I feel she's going to be gas. And don't let her be down a set, 4-2, 5-2. She's going to pack it in. And that's the worst thing you can do playing against someone aggressive like Coco when she's on her game is give her a set because you feel you can't win it. Coco Golf wins. And that's her path to getting to the championship again here in New York, guys. I mean, that's pretty much it. It's not a hard draw. She just has to get past, in my opinion, Sabalenka. That would be the toughest match. If she gets into a championship with Elena Rabakin on the other side of the net, I think that would be a much easier match than someone like Sabalenka. But I don't think she has a problem with Vavara, Solana, Svitolina, Navarro, or even if Marta, if she comes through. Uh, I don't think she'll have a problem with Pedosa. I think Vika could be a little more challenging because she's such a good shot maker. But I think Pedosa would come through. And again, I think she takes out whether it be Keys or Sabalenka. And we're back into the championship. Comment below, guys. We're going to take a look at Igas Fiontech's path to the championship tomorrow. Show some love. We'll be right back. Enjoy. New York is here.